Hey guys, so I was just about to go ahead and start playing Alan Wake 2 for my other channel, but I saw this on Reddit. I just kind of popped in real quick and then I saw it and I was like, you know what? This is something that I feel um, is a current topic of discussion on my channel and I felt like it might be something good to talk about right now. The end game view. The view of the end game as an end game whale. Crisscross Applesauce is admitting that he's an endgame whale. Today I spent, and I'm quoting him, today I spent around $400 to try and get my hands on Teox yet again. $400 for me and my wife is, is groceries for a month, by the way. I went fairly hard in the paint. Oh, sorry, that's something Chosen used to say. I went, he also used to say, par for the course. I went fairly hard for him during his sacred event. Pulled about 90 sacreds. Oh my god, 90 sacreds? I think right now I've only got like 37 sacreds on my main account. Didn't end up uh, didn't end up getting him then. I did manage to grab him during this summoning pool event and walked away with Teox, a third copy of Dracomorph, and my first Necmo. He was stoked for him. Those are good, good champions, uh, especially if you're talking about pairing them with the Faction Guardian, with Teox. I've seen... Some of the videos, I'm pretty sure you guys have too. Teox looks like a fucking monster, bro. Like, I would be so happy if I got him. Raid is a predatory game. We all know that. I'm fortunate enough to make enough money to support my lifestyle, save money for my future, and be able to spend on this game. That's pretty good. Yeah, if you're in that position, I mean, I'm never going to tell you what to spend your money on and what not to spend your money on, whatever. But it's pretty cool. I think that if you're, you're able to fund whatever shit you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody and as long as you're not like destroying yourself as long as it's not a detriment yeah go ahead go ahead and spend spend money if you can afford it like that like good for you hats off clap clap even in the light or even in light of the predatory practices raid takes part in the game is extremely fun yes this is true i'm glad he's saying this as a whale and has depth to it that many games do not have it's also extremely easy to pick up and play whenever and continue feeling progression even while not playing. <clears throat> yeah, because um, you know a lot of it is just auto-based, right? It's an AFK type game. A lot of it comes with... Well, like a lot of the engagement is setting up, right? There's pulling shards, there's theory crafting, there's putting teams together. But after that, once you get into the end game, it's mostly just about you making sure you're winning whatever event or tournament or using your energy if it was like whatever it is basically you can put your phone down and let dragon run in the background case in point i'm on my wife's account right now now it's also uh this is a huge draw for me as i often don't have time to sit and play a more traditional game that's true this is also why you know i find it easier to bang out content for raid versus my other channels where i'm i'm really trying to grow them but they just take so much more time like alan wake for example is going to take me probably another four hours to fully complete that's not even including the dlc and then i have to write scripts for it and then i have to um you know uh, put everything together uh it just takes it takes a lot more to do that than it does to um for me to just pump out raid content but i like i enjoy raid content i enjoy playing it i enjoy talking with you guys in the comments going back and forth with you guys sharing the opinions of you know people like crisscross applesauce or you know in-game chat etc or reading your guys's comments after pulling teox i for the first time had a feeling of dissatisfaction or numbness if you will let that sink in guys after pulling teox i for the first time had a feeling of dissatisfaction or numbness if you will not from the money i spent to pull him or on past purchases but instead as a realization that it doesn't really do much of anything for me the main interest for me to get him was for hydra hydra is the sole reason i play the game and i love it so much i currently do around 8 billion on clash points without doing a single cheese comp no Wixwell team, no Trenda team. Note, I could do Wixwell if I wanted, but Shield Simulator isn't fun to me. And my account is allergic to Trenda. I've never pulled her even in my many attempts during events where she is present. Progressive chance or summoning pool. 
After pulling Teox and the initial excitement worn off, wore off, I began to think to myself, what does this even do for me? Yeah, I may be able to add an extra billion clash points potentially to my score, but that's still not enough to compete with cheese comps. One billion more clash points is a rounding error for Trunda teams. But the thing that started to resonate with me even more was now the teams I've worked on so hard to min-max and perf um, wait, hold on. But the thing that started to resonate with me even more was now the teams I've worked so hard on to min-max and perfectly become useless. Yo, know, he's saying that the teams he worked so much on uh, become use have become useless. The act of pulling Teox effectively invalidates previous spending and grinding. Oh, wow, yeah. The act of pulling Teox effectively invalidates previous spending and grinding I had done. Wow. That's, that's huge. That's a lot. Like, I'm still trying to, like, swallow that. I'm still trying to absorb that. The act of pulling a new overpowered champion invalidates his previous spending grinding and time he had spent this is coming from a whale to put into perspective i have two nergigante archers and very well may not even use one of them in hydra anymore because there are other better options a champ considered a hydra god is somehow not good enough for my team I truly love and enjoy this game and will continue to play, but this moment has really made me realize that there is truly no point any longer to keep chasing the next big thing. I'm going into relaxation mode. I'm going to enjoy my account for what it is and grows... Uh, oh, for what it is and grows to be naturally without spending. Too long didn't read. I make this post... I make this post to be insight for those who spend or consider it. If you're able to spend and it brings you enjoyment, go ahead. But diminishing returns are a serious thing in raid, especially late in endgame. Yeah, we've talked about this before, guys. This isn't new. Uh, I've talked about this on stream. I've talked about it uh, in some of my other videos where it's just like, yeah, if you want to become a spender in raid and you feel like you want to spend, like, aside from all the other bullshit I just mentioned, what you get in the beginning is a lot more if you're a spender than if you're in the late game. For an example, I could drop $1,000 on my wife's account right now, right? And I could boost this up, like, all the way up. Like, like $1,000 is going to go a long way. Gear, champions. But if I were to jump into my account, to my, my main account, my endgame account, or even my alt account... $1,000 isn't going to do much for my account. Like, it will and it won't. Because you guys have heard, it me, heard me say this before. There's nothing in Raid I haven't done already that I haven't completed, except for the northern part of Centranos. But, like, you know what I mean? Like, okay. And then Siege is a new, sure. But is that really going to be... You know what I mean? But it really gets me thinking, because it's just like, you know, we, we get Carnage... At the end of Centranos, quote unquote, we get um, Amasu from doing Siege. This really puts things into perspective. This line right here the act of pulling Teox effectively invalidates previous spending grinding I had done. And I think about that too, right? So, for an example, uh, of course, my wife's account, I'm thinking about Hydra, right? The, um, the chant, oh, I guess I can't show you guys here. The champions that I worked so hard to build in, in Hydra were Geomancer, right? Early on, I was using Geomancer. Uh, Ugo, I built like three Ugos. I built three Inquisitor Shamayels. I built three Geomancers. And if we look at my account right now, not this account, but if we look at my, if we were to, if we were to look at my account right now, you would see that I do not, I, I, I don't use any of those champ, oh, except for Inquisitor Shamayel, right? Bar Inquisitor Shamael, I do not use Geomancer or Go. Some of the legendaries that I used to use, Molly. I used to use Molly um, quite often. I built teams around Molly. I used to use Duchess a lot more often in Hydra. 
But as time has progressed and I've started pulling new champs and I've done different comps, like this right here, what he says, invalidating previous spending and grinding, it, it resonates with me because now I'm realizing as I'm reading this that yeah, all that time that I spent building my Hydra teams effectively for nothing because I replaced those. Now, the other side of that, the other argument could be made that yeah, that's the point of this game. The point is to progressively get better. The point is to um, get new champions to replace your old ones so that you can do more damage. But it's just like, it's that point of diminishing returns. Like how, when does it end? How are you going to know when enough is enough? Of course, if you find enjoyment from that, yeah, sure, keep on going. Like I still find enjoyment from it. I still have a lot to improve when it comes to doing Hydra. Like I could, I could, you know, or my clan could benefit from putting up billions of more uh, clash points. But it's just like, you know, he said it himself. There's kind of no point because you're not going to be able to compete with not just the Wixwell uh, cheese comps, but like a lot of the other players who just out cracking you. So I think the point is to find that middle point that you like and, you know, it can, can really sit down well with, but then always realize that um, the time that you spend in raid, the, the the time that you spend in raid, the grinding, the, the etc., the the money, the, the pulling, the stress. There's always going to be another thing. There's always going to be the next thing. Um, so, I like seeing him say that as an end game whale. He's realizing this, and I like that he shares his thoughts. I like that he's sharing his experience. I feel like there's not enough krakens or whales that really talk about this kind of um i don't want to say issue but this topic it's not too widely um pronounced in the raid community when i think it it might help the community as a whole like yeah ash talks about it and his uh his spending and you know he does his thing and I i've talked about it ad nauseum about my spending habits in raid and you know that whole spiel but it's cool to see someone else talk about it I'm a free to play player for three years now, just reached end game, and I already think about crit. I'm. I already think about crit. What? I'm all. I'll fix it for you. I'm already. It's not his fault if he's not speaking um, English. English is not your first language. That That's completely fine. I already think about to create a new account because the journey was so great. I don't care for billions in Hydra damage, Live Arena, or Plat Arena. Awesome to hear. Totally agree with the sentiment. I have a mid-game free-to-play account that is wildly enjoyable. It's crazy how quickly and efficiently I progress just because of the knowledge that I have now. True. I just recently started getting more interested in Live Arena on my main. It's a lot of fun, shifting focus slightly, but the issues with Live Arena is that it's only available during certain times. I understand why that's needed, but due to my wild playtime schedule, I'm not often... I often am not playing when it's open, and if it is open, I may have other things I'd rather do. True. I always thought playing free to play was the end game. You've reached the end of the end game. This game is crap for spenders. Okay, we got a big one here, guys. RSL is actually very well designed as a resource management game. There are meaningful, weighty decisions regarding resource allocation. True. Unlike a lot of other gotcha games that basically puts you on rails and showers you with rewards just for showing the fuck up and going through the motions daily. Spending to accelerate the progression is basically denying yourself the enjoyment of figuring out what to do with what you're given. This is also true. Case in point, how many people do you know in your clan, in your discord, who have bot accounts? I've met quite a few. And they're pretty easy to, to, they're pretty easy to spot because I've had so many people come into discord asking me how to you know, build a, build a, a team using Ninja before Ninja came back. You know what I mean? They have a Ninja, they're level 100, and they're, they're asking, you know, very simple questions, and they're asking things like, oh, how do I build Siffy? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of obvious. And, you know, I've talked about it before. There's nothing innately um, wrong with that. But you are also denying yourself the enjoyment of figuring out what to do. So, you know, even though that is a quote-unquote cost-effective thing that I do not condone, 
officially do not condone. I'm letting you guys know, do not do that. I'm a free-to-play end gamer who started just after Ninja was no longer offered. I've been having a blast progressing through Curse City, TTA, and Live Arena, not to mention increasing my damage in Hydra. I have no desires for any specific champs because I will work with what I'm offered when I got bored reading his stuff. I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'm bored already. That. Absolutely the truth. Uh, oh, Lord B4. Boozer and I were talking a few weeks back. He made me realize as a five-year end game player that even if I summoned a non-void Lego, only 5% of them move the needle on my account. This is a true thing. And Lord B, uh, I've seen him before. I've seen him around. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's been around. Been in the community for quite some time. And that's true. So when I think about it, like, who can I pull from like a Sacred or, or a Blue Shard that's actually going to help me progress my account? Maybe Stultis, but just barely. He's a defense-based nuker. Uh, Non-Voids over here. Maybe Aislin. I, I, I don't know. Faction Guardians. Nobody here. Uh, let's check here. Gregor. I don't even know who that is. Can't pull Nergigante. Let's check one more over here. I'd love to have another Rodos, but that'll only take me that far. And Mashaled, not really. You see, so I don't know. Who are some champions that you guys would, would like to pull that would actually change your account? Specifically end gamers. If you're an end game player, who could you pull that it's a non-void that's gonna make a difference on your account? You could only use 18 champs per week for blah blah blah. Uh, my ex and I started this game back in September of last year. We both spent quite a bit of money chasing heroes within the span of three months. I dropped $7,000 on this dumb game. He did too, but about $21,000. We love getting the rush from getting good heroes, but that doesn't satisfy us because that satisfaction dies quickly. No longer plays, but I still do not on the account that I but I still do not on the account that I spent, but the one I bought for 700 I should have done that in the beginning. Your last sentence about buying an account is true. I wish I would have bought one when I started playing. Literally would have saved thousands if I had no doubt about it. Hindsight, though. Yes. Again, I'm not condoning this. I'm telling you not to do this because it is illegal and or it's frowned upon and, and you're not supposed to do it. Uh, Larium, you know, terms, contracts. But if you know you're going to be in... If, if you know that in the long run you are going to spend like $1,000 or $10,000. Honestly, could tactically acquire an account being sold for that much. That's going to have the equivalent of, I don't know, $100,000 spent on it or something like that. You, you know what I mean? You do $8 billion. Meanwhile, I'm happy to get a million without getting wiped. True. Experience and knowledge will take you far. That's true. Looking for a clan? <laughs> no. If you're going to chunk that much money at raid, hell, I'll be your Teox in real life, bro. That's funny. Like, hey, if you're going to throw that much money, I'll, bro, I'll be your Teox in real life. Free-to-play ends up being much more fun, in my opinion. Yes and no. I think in the beginning, being free-to-play is, is pretty fun. Because you do get that rush of achieving things. But then, after a while, um, you, you start to, like, reach this wall that can't really break down and so there's this long lull of either you don't know what to do where to go or where to progress like for an example my wife's account right now all right uh, she stopped playing but i'm still running it on the side or i just got back into it see she's got the revival path but right now like what am i what am i doing i'm i'm just kind of like waiting to get the gear i've been set i've been uh, grinding in the dungeons waiting to get the gear to build an ultra nightmare team also trying to wait until I get the food in order to six star some champions because that's kind of where we're at. Without spending money, we're not going to get a lot of champions to feed into five star or whatever or make the champions that we like. We have key champions to create an unkillable team and I can like I know how to do it. But without the gear and without the chicken and the books, the books are another thing like we, she doesn't have a lot of Lego books or epic books to make things happen. Like, you're just kind of stuck in that lull. You get limited options and you make the most of what you know and what you have on your account. When I used to spend early on, it felt like cheating the system because everything started to get too easy now. Now I like the challenge of having to min-max what I have and experiment potentially 
share and potentially share what I found out with others through various forms. This is also true. Um, like, especially about feeling like you're cheating the system. I was level 35 when I first started playing Raid. I was free to play. I was free to play, guys. And then guess what? I hit a wall. I had no idea what to do. And these offers started popping up. They were like, oh, um, hey, if you want to uh, get Lego books, and buy this. If you want some energy to grind out the dungeons, buy this. Oh, you want some shards? Sure. Let me sell you this. You can get sacred shards. Bro, I bought a pack. A three pack of sacreds for $100. And I got three epics. I was a fucking tool. <laughs> but yeah, um, later on I would buy more sacreds, right? I actually ended up summoning Cupidus, who was my first Lego champion at level 35. And he took me far enough to progress a little bit further. You know, nothing significant. How much do you make after taxes per year? Take home for my fiance and I is around 200k before bonuses, annual expenses for mortgage and everything is around 30k a year. Very good. Bought my house in 2017 for 85k, 1400 square feet. Fuck yeah, bro. Plenty of plenty for the two of us right now. Absolutely. Albeit my fiance really wants to get a bigger and nicer house. That's totally fine. That's understandable. But I told her for the time being, there's no point to. We'll likely upgrade in three years. Dude, this guy is. I like this guy. This guy is awesome. He's level headed. I I really like this. I like seeing this. Um, and you know, because it's a, it's a discussion I've had with my wife as well in terms of upgrading. So it, it kind of resonates with me. Just so everyone's clear, there are multiple stages of grief. Grief. It's this. Denial, depression, guilt, anger, acceptance, fear, bargaining, shock, anticipatory grief. Yep. I got him from only one sacred shard. Good for you. I have I had saved eight sacred shards, blew them off. My goal was to get Romantu. I only have fun when I have a good role on a... Yeah, that's true. We're on a good piece. It doesn't require money. I like the idea of micromanagement, building up slowly what I already have. And it's possible. Teox is actually my first busted AoE nuker. No Taurus and shit. Bro! Look at this, bro. This is fucking awesome. Why do you wipe out the names, bro? I put them on blast. Essentially, you're spending to... Uh, you're spending to is ending the game sooner for you. This is kind of true. Before I continue reading this, I'm going to tell you about a, um, a Kraken that I knew when I first started streaming on Twitch. He uh, told me that he dropped the equivalent of a really nice car or a really nice down payment on a house in nine months. He spent almost $100,000 in nine months. I think the $90,000 was what he told me. And I would hop onto his account and yeah, it looked like he did. He had all the void Legos. He had all the best gear. Like there was nothing he couldn't do. He had gear for days. And like, I'm talking like the best of the best. Like this guy would buy all the shards, he would buy all the packs. He would buy all of the weapon, the gear packs. He was actually the one that told me that the rates for getting better gear, the best gear comes from actually buying the gear packs that they sell in shop. He was like, it's yeah, no, no. He said, it's better to buy the gear packs than it is to buy the energy. Because he was telling me, like, oh, I've spent you know a lot of money buying tens of thousands of energy to end up with a few, like, good pieces, but nothing godly. But he was saying, and he showed me, that most of his godly gear came from the gear packs. I'm not saying to buy this, I'm just relaying what he told me. But eventually he told me like within nine months that he was pretty much done with the game. He was like, I don't play it anymore. There's nothing for me to do in the game. Like there's there's nothing I haven't completed. And you know, it's kind of, you know, the same, I'm in the same boat where there's not really much for me to do other than to make comment and, and talk with you guys and, you know, react to content and, you know, have fun going back and forth with these discussions. But we're in the same boat. It's just, it took me five and a half years or just about five years to get there, where he got to where I'm at in terms of like being quote unquote done with the game. I'm not done with the game, by the way, uh, but th he got there in nine months. So yeah, there's only so much you can do to improve an account. Once all your teams are tuned in and optimized and all areas are cleared, the game is pretty much over. This is especially true for PVE players. 
PvP will remain viable because there's no final optimization for those teams. It's an endless thing. That's true. You may have to change your path, move away from Hydra to keep things fresh. All that being said, I would not underestimate Teox. Absolute beast, improving endgame accounts. You should be excited about this. Also important to remember that spending is not an investment. Someday, Raid will shut down. Just like that video I, I talked about um, reacting to Tyraku Raids. It's servers, and you will be compensated with nothing no matter how much you spend. Anyone who thinks spending on a game or any form of entertainment is an investment is being ridiculous and disingenuous in ways. Why would any rational person expect compensation? Playing the game for short-term for short -term entertainment is the compensation. Do people pay $15 for a movie ticket? Is it 15? I thought it was like 20. Expecting compensation after the movie is over because it wasn't a quote-unquote investment? Do people pay more to go to a sports game expecting compensation after the game is over because it wasn't a quote-unquote investment? Paying money for entertainment is what it is. You pay for the luxury of having a fleeting, fun experience. We all know we are paying for pixels if we don't own the game. That is the nature with online games nowadays. For most players I know, myself included, Raid has given them more of entertainment value buck for buck than anything else. I've been playing for I've been playing Raid for over four years. I can say that no other game. I can say that for no other game. And even if you spend fifty dollars on a triple A uh, game a game on Steam, you still can't play it anymore if the sh if the server is shut down. It's the same thing. The compensation is the fun you have along the way. Yeah, hundred percent.